Hi friends, so as I mentioned, there is an audio part of this tour that I will attempt to summarize as we go along to the different places if I can. Not sure how far we have to be inside. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, you're going to start here. Guys, just so you know, uh, it's not registering my headphones. So this might take a second. Sorry about that. Yeah. Oxford University is one of the oldest universities in the world. One of the largest of 30 separate colleges. also the Cathedral Church of the Diocese of Oxford since 1546. The Thames and the Charwell Rivers run along the other si either side of this. Um, so most of that was just logistical things. Um, they've asked us to be quiet. So like I said, I'll be summarizing and maybe kind of quietly as, as I go, because this is a place where people are living and working. Uh, folks with the red sashes are guides. And so they would, um, they're the people you ask for help. And otherwise I got to show my ticket. Um, so you're going to get a very strange camera view in just a second. Um, while I do that, it's in my email. Uh, but other than that, we're about to start. Can you guys hear me? If you could just, um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. You guys can confirm that you can hear me. I just got a notification that audio stopped working. I'll wait a minute. Okay, I'm seeing a thumbs up, so we'll continue. There's a bunch of places um, where you're gonna see uh, headphone signs. That's where we'll be stopping and that's where I'll attempt to show you guys the view as well as um, as well as summarize what we're hearing on the audio tour. Meadow Quad. Let's find out what that's about. Christ Church has influenced the tide of history for five centuries educating a number of people 
and today it's a modern center of education. Most of the rooms we're going to see are going to be occupied by students. Christchurch's buildings have adapted as they've modernized. That is actually the refectory of the old monastery that stood on this site. And it is now the library and provides accommodations for students. And Christchurch has inspired novels and fictional settings for TV and film. The next stop is going to be about that. Quick question as we're walking to the next stop. Um, I turned around twice in this quad. Is that causing anybody to be queasy? Should I do it slower or maybe uh, just do it once? <laughs> I was lost. Nice to know this is the way. My completely random side note. Uh, there was a sign earlier with the Mandalorian that said this is the way, pointing at somebody's comic book shop. Okay, thank you to Katie and Dana for confirming we're all right. Going up the steps now. There's a few folks taking photos, so. you guys take a look at this view and tell me if you think it looks familiar. I'm pretty sure I know where we are, but I'm going to wait until the next headphone stop to confirm this particular stairwell. So the stairs that we just went up are the scenes from Harry being welcomed to Hogwarts. And I think we're going to get to go into the Great Hall a little bit later. This, this was built by King Henry VIII, Principal Advisor Cardinal Wolsey. Ooh. And I'm being told the ceiling was is spectacular, so this includes the crest. We, oh. So this is the beautiful ceiling that I failed to show you guys earlier. It's a very important crest that you can see in the middle. The red one right there. Um, going to listen to the information about the crest and then we'll go inside. This is called Fan Vaulting, the last example of Gothic architecture before the Victorian Revival. This 
This was granted by... <laughs> so, very quickly, um, this is the crest that was given under Fida. So, the crest includes um, a hat given to Cardinal Wolsey. That's part of why the crest is important. You can see the one up, up there. Actually, I think this is the crest that, we, that was given to the church. This just happens to be another crest. Whoever said everything is very English here, I feel like that's justification for having a lot of crests. Let you guys look at this a little bit more. The red line symbolizes Pope Leo X. And the blue represents the Earls of Suffolk and other influential people. The corn of truffs represent Thomas of Becket. And Thomas Becket was a very powerful churchman. This is the Tudor Rose. It is the symbol of Henry VIII. So this is the crest that, as I mentioned, is right up there. Some of the symbolism there. Okay. Excuse me. inside. We're about to enter the ante hall. This is one of the oldest parts of the college dating back to 1829. Sorry, not 18. Sorry, I don't think I have the date quite right on that because I'm being told that it that this hall has been used the same way for the past 500 years. So, let me try and go back and get that. Ah. 1529. This is where students eat lunch and dinner every day. So this is the ante hall that we're in right now, which was used for serving students food. It's one of the oldest parts of the college, built in 1529. There's rooms off to the side where they would be preparing the food. And we are about to go to another room that some Harry Potter fans might recognize. I'll tell you more about it in, this, in a second, but this is the Great Hall. Filmmakers based the Hogwarts Dining Hall on this great hall. And we're being asked not to touch the, not to touch anything. Lunch is self-service.
And there are two dinner services, informal hall and formal hall. And formal hall, everyone wears gowns. So this is Henry VIII and Colonel Woolsey. Colonel Woolsey originally founded Christ Church, but Henry VIII refounded it and actually named it Christ Church. All of the fortresses have a link to Christ Church. Women were only admitted to the college in 1980s, which is why most of these pictures are men. Now, however, roughly half the, the um, students are women. So you can see very Harry Potter-esque senior members sitting up here, just like the Hogwarts professors. And this is where the meal service is. So I'm gonna get out of the way because there's people trying to take pictures. Beautiful fireplace over here. And there's the self-service line for lunch, I imagine. And in case anybody was wondering who this guy was, this is Cyrilla Jackson. We'll have to look into him later. A lot of portraits in here as well. And I don't know if you guys can see, but along the sides of the walls inside the Great Hall. Okay, going back the stairs where the first years came to Hogwarts before they're sorting. Okay, now we're coming up on the no peel door. Not sure what that means, let's find out. Nonetheless, I think it's pretty obvious why it's called the no peel door. It says no peel. So, great attempt to get out of the way, learn a little bit about the no peel door, and let you guys know where This is the oldest surviving student graffiti, probably burned in with hot pokers. The guy who did this became a member of parliament and got appointed home secretary and served as prime minister in 1834 and another year. Okay, so a slight correction. It's not the student who went on and did those things. It's, it is what the graffiti refers to. So Peel, um, when, uh, when he was home secretary, put some controversial policies in place. In 1829, Peel wanted to remove discrimination against Roman Catholics, but that was controversial. So because he wanted to end that discrimination, the graffiti was against him and his policies. Um, and he eventually stood his ground and did get his policy passed. Christ Church now welcomes people from all over the world, from every faith and none. Robert Peel is also famous for, pace, for creating the first police force. That's why policemen here are known as Bobbies, because it's short for Robert. Okay. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Uh, my phone overheated. <laughs> um, so, welcome back. Uh, as I was saying, let me turn the camera around. 
Uh, we were just finishing talking about the no peel door, which is a message left for Robert Peel. Um, former uh, member of parliament for Oxford, former home secretary in the 1800s, former prime minister a couple times in uh, 1834 uh, and 1841. And one of his policies was about ending discrimination against Roman Catholics, and so controversial. So the message was left for him that they didn't like his policies. However, he stuck to it, and now um, Oxford welcomes people of all faiths and no faith at all from all over the world. He's also the um, the guy that made the first police uh, force in Britain, um, which is why policemen are called Bobbies. So I'm gonna go to the next stop. Please let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything that was confusing because I'm telling you guys stuff as I'm hearing it. Um, if you have questions about, I can absolutely revisit. Um, there's also additional content that I can explore. I'm just doing the intros for everything. Um, if you've ever been to a museum with me, you will understand why. If you haven't been to a museum with me, ask Ben why he has literally had to leave a museum because it was it took me two hours longer to finish it. I read everything, I listen to almost everything, but I I don't know who who is sad about that. But don't don't be sad. I, my point is simply that. Um, if you want me to go into more things, uh, then I absolutely can. Just let me know, um, and I'll, I'll play another part of my audio, and we'll try and get more information. We're currently at the Tom Quad. Um, and that's a little bit about that. So many of the rooms, students are studying or being taught, so I have to be quiet about this, because some of the windows are open. This is the biggest quad at Oxford, called the quad because it has four sides. So Christchurch has the biggest college chapel in, in Oxford because it's built on the site of a previous monastery. I believe that that guy is uh, the Cardinal Woolsey that we've been referencing so many times. So Woolsey planned to build a cloister or covered walkway, which is why there's these little stones that should come out, but he never got to finish. So this is the Tom Tower by Christopher Wren. Christopher Wren is a guy who did a bunch of chapels or cathedrals in uh, in England, including a few if you're staying in London, like St. Paul's Cathedral. That's one of his babies. It was like his masterpiece. Although Ben and I did hear from a tour guide that he also did, I think it was St. James's Church, which is a much simpler church, um, and that was his favorite. Okay, we're at Cathedral Entrance, so that's going to be number 11. We'll listen a little bit, and then I'll see where I go inside. So the cathedral is meant to be a very quiet place for reflection. We all know this, you know, you guys are, are pastors um, or very close, uh, closely um, working with pastors in your church. So I won't really be able to talk in this space, but I'm going to show it to you. 
and there's also a little intro that I'll kind of go through before I go inside. But I just want you to see, you'll see this closer up. You just won't get any commentary from me until I come out. Okay, so let's get the commentary now at stop number 12. Christian worship since the 8th century and still remains in use. This is both the College Chapel and the Cathedral Church for the College of Oxford, which refers to an area of England. So prayers are usually offered on the hour, so I think we may have just missed it. And worship is offered here at least three times every day.